Retiring before 59 and a half. All right, so first and foremost, my friends, you don't need to wait until you're 59 and a half to retire. Just FYI. I was talking to a guy the other day. Um, you know, he's ready to hang it up. And uh, he's 58. He says, and I said, why don't you just hang it up now? You know, you can. You're financially ready to do it. He goes, but I'm not 59 and a half. I said, oh, yeah, you don't have to be. You don't have to be at all. He said, really? I said, yeah. I mean, I retired, quote unquote, when I was 47 to start my own business. All right, so now his thing is uh, pretty interesting. We'll just say he works at GE. So he's 58, all right? So the first question is, well, where do I get income from? Because I'll be penalized if I take money out of my 401k. I said, remember, it won't be um, because there is an exception to the 10% I got Finney here because Finney is a knucklehead and trying to walk both Finney and Pablo at the same time will rip your arms off. And I already had rotator cuff surgery. So Kevin's walking Pablo and I'm walking Finney because, uh, uh oh, trying to get this dog to work it, to wear him down because he is nothing but a teenage boy, this guy. Hey, Rooster. Hi, Red Pill Rooster. Red Pill Rooster. Anyway, so going back to what I was saying. Um, so he's, uh, once you're, if you separate from service, you're, in this case, General Electric. He doesn't work at General Electric. I'm just using that for example. If you separate from service and you're after the age of 54, all right, so you're 55 and above, and you leave your retirement plan at General Electric, you can take money out, sans, penalty sans is what us sophisticated types that's what we say because we speak french that means without avoir sans and that's about it that i know for french all right anyway so he can take money out of his 401k because he's over the age of 54 and he's going to leave his money at general electric he can take money out of his 401k without penalty now he'll still be subject to taxation mind you right so you pooping what are you doing bro yeah what are you doing here? Sniffing, Sniffy Joe, Sniffy Finn. Um, but it'll be without penalty. Now, the issue that we have to contend with a lot is some companies are very restrictive on allowing you to have access to your money. Some companies say, no, it's one and done. You don't have, you can't just say, hey, man, I need a check for 20000 bucks. Company says, no, it's all or nothing. You get the whole thing or you get nothing, but you can't have... Uh, distributions other than the entire amount in fact some companies pretty big uh, companies too do that it kind of ticks me off so in this case the guy said oh man what do i do well it's pretty easy in this case you tell general electric send me a check but josh he's under the age of 59 and a half he'll be penalized and taxed no what happens is is that ge will send a check to him for the two we'll just say two hundred thousand bucks all right and they're going to send an IRS, a 1099 to the IRS, stating that he took a 100% distribution from his uh, 401k. He's got 60 days. I can't remember if it's date of receipt of the check or date of issuance. I can't remember. To put that money into an IRA to avoid taxes and penalties. This is called an indirect rollover. Indirect rollover. So they're... Well, a direct rover is simply they're directly, GE, is directly sending your assets to an IRA, a qualified plan. That's called a direct rover. GE's directly sending them your money. An indirect rollover is they're sending it to you first. And then you have 60 days in which to forward that money to the IRA provider. That's called an indirect rollover. Now, what happens in this case, pretty simple, is GE says, look, man, we're not going to let you take distributions other than the one. We'll send you 200000 bucks, and we don't give a hell what you do with the money. You're like, all right. We'll just say I need 30000 bucks for simplicity. So go to your local bank. You deposit that money into your checking account. All right. You write a check for $170,000 and forward that to your Vanguard IRA, or in this case, it's probably even easier just to afford that, open an IRA at the bank, frankly. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you're saying, okay, I need 30,000 bucks to live on before I'm 59 and a half and I get access to my money without penalty. What I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna take my 200,000 bucks, I'm gonna deposit in my checking account, I'm gonna take $170,000 and put that into an IRA at the bank, just for simplicity. The bank will then send to the IRS, I think it's a 5498, I can't remember off the top of my head, but this 8606, what that, what that form is, it tells the IRS how much you've actually deposited into your uh, account, your IRA account. And so basically the IRS will say, hey, you had 200,000 coming out, i.e. through via 1099 through General Electric, you had 170,000 going in. It's either 5498 or 8606, I can't remember. So if anyone of you guys know, put in the comments. So you're, you're short 30,000 bucks. You're like, yep. And they're gonna say, okay, you gotta pay tax on 30,000 bucks. You're gonna go, yep. And you're gonna say it's 100% right because I took 30,000 out as a distribution from my account in which to, uh, because I was post 55 or post 54 years old, and I took that money from my employer. All right, that would be the way to do it. Now, this is not tax advice. You need to confirm that works for you. I'm just telling you, that is an option. I've, uh, I've heard this work. If it doesn't work, you can't blame me. I'm just telling you right now. That would be a way around it. Obviously, tax advice is not what I'm giving you. I'm just giving you tax awareness that this might be something that could work. And it makes sense. I mean, post-55, you took a distribution from your money. You kept $30,000. That's, we know that for a fact that is, well, I hate to say for a fact because it makes it seem like I'm giving you tax advice. We know for most likely because you're post-55 and you kept the money in your 401k and you took a distribution, that $30,000 that did not make its way to an IRA is considered as a qualified exception to the 10% penalty. We know that. Now, again, will that be specific to you? I can't, I can't say that for sure. I just can't because I just don't know. I imagine it will be, but you have to dive into that with your own tax guy. All right, part two of that, we also know that the 170000 you forward to the IRS or forward to the IRA provider, uh, as long as you have 60 days to do that, that money will go in as a deposit into your IRA, and thus will be free of 10% penalty and taxation because you did an indirect role. For it. So this happens all the time, just FYI. This isn't very fancy. It's not, oh my goodness, that's tax. Man, you know, it's not, this isn't fancy stuff. It's just pretty simple. But now, you, hopefully, your employer avoids all that and says, yeah, we'll give you a check for 30,000 bucks. That way you're done. You say, okay, the employer says, here's a check for 30,000 bucks. You gotta pay tax on it, but because you're over the age of 54 and you kept the money in the 401k, you don't have to pay a penalty on it. That would be my only concern, frankly, is because the money is no longer in the 401k. But I mean, see, even that doesn't make I mean, think about it. I, I, again, I'm not telling you how to deal with the tax man, but think about it from a reality perspective. You say to the IRA, you say to the GE, send me a check for 200,000 bucks. I'm post 54 years old and the money is still in the I and still my 401k. They're just cashing me out, all right? IRS says, that's fine. It's, it's, pre -tax, it's uh, not penalized because of those qualified exception rules. All right, we, we know that. So why would it be any different if you were to send 170,000 of that to an IRA? It doesn't make any sense. So again, it's just logically speaking, I get the tax code is not all that logical, but logically speaking, you should be just fine. But again, don't sue me, bro. Don't tase me, bro, because uh, I'm not your tax person. Um, but anyway, just keep that in mind. You don't have to wait till you're 59 and a half. Ideally, again, the GE in this case will allow you to take multiple distributions. And they can avoid all this crap to begin with. But um, yeah, it's well worth it too. All right. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.